When I was eight years old, my grandma would tell me stories every single Sunday. She had this big Grimm Brothers fairy tale book where she would tell me stories like Little Red Riding Hood and Hansel and Gretel out of. Those are stories that were popular when she was a kid during World War II and long before that when her grandma was a kid. Those are stories that will remain popular when I have kids someday. When I would go over there every single Sunday, I would never get bored of these stories and I'd want to hear the same ones over and over and over again. But why is that? That is because the concept of a story is appealing to us humans. With a story, we manage to transform information into a message, a message that can convey emotions like awe, passion, or sadness, a message that can enable us to inform and to educate, sometimes a message that can teach a lesson, for example, that you should never trust the wolf. Storytelling is an art that has been practiced for millennia to inform and to educate and to teach. Over thousands of years, humans have perfected this art to make information more universally accessible to seniors, adults, and eight-year-old kids alike. The concept of storytelling, however, is not just limited to literary genres, fairy tales, and bedtime stories. And that is because in a way, the only requirement for a good story is the availability of information or data. What a story in the literary genre does is it takes letters, structures those into words, into sentences, into paragraphs, into chapters, and so on. We use that to make a message understandable from information. And the concept of data is not too similar of that. Only now, we don't have 26 letters that we can take and craft a message from, we have nine numbers that we can use. Now, when we deal with data, it is mathematics that serves as the grammar and the syntax to make our information more universally understandable. Telling a story with data describes the transformation of raw information into a purpose. And in a nutshell, there's two major elements to telling a story with data. First and foremost, there's the area of statistics and math. Now, I know that is commonly equated to magic, but it really is not that bad. We use statistics to extract, aggregate, and to clean data to basically make it understandable to us. Statistics and math serve like a dictionary to us that we can use to make information understandable. Secondly, is a notion of creativity. And that is the part that is often forgotten when we tell a story with data. Data science, data analytics have become a buzzword. However, seldom the notion of creativity is mentioned. Creativity means that you understand who you are crafting your message towards, and you take a unique approach to structure your message and your story. In a nutshell, that was telling, that is what telling a story with data is about for me. In a way, telling a story with data is like painting a picture with words, only instead of words, we use numbers. Let me give you an example. According to the US Census Bureau in 2018, over 50% of the people who live below the poverty line in Cincinnati are black. In that same year, only 40% of the population are black. You do not need to be a data scientist to see that this number is disproportionate and that there is a disproportionate amount of black people living in poverty. Data can be our cue that can enable us to tell a story and to enable us to tell the story of 400 years of exclusion and systemic racism. It can enable us to tell a story to chart a more inclusive path forward in the United States of America. With data like this becoming more universally available, becoming ubiquitous almost, I'm going to make the bold statement that numbers are becoming the new words. As storytellers, we can use data like this to inform, to educate, and most importantly, to empower. 
It is this very notion of empowerment that led me to found the NEO initiative last summer. We are a student organization at the University of Cincinnati that provides pro bono data analytics consulting to minority owned small businesses in our community. Now I know that sounds like quite a mouthful, but our work is really straightforward. One, we do data research. We try to aggregate data that will help our clients make the next big decision in their business. Number two, data analysis. We analyze the data. We try to uncover patterns within that data, within that information. And most importantly, number three, we are problem solvers. We use data to solve a bigger problem step by step. We are hoping to empower small businesses and do our part to a more inclusive Cincinnati economy. We are storytellers for those who have been marginalized and excluded, for those who do not enjoy the privilege of fair competition in our economy. And although we may only have the resources to do our work in Cincinnati, I can guarantee you that does not make it any less powerful. That is why I want to illustrate that with you, with our largest client. They are Cincinnati's leading entrepreneurship accelerator, and they focus their work on black and brown aspiring entrepreneurs. Their work is truly incredible and founded upon the notion of empowerment. And when they approached us not too long ago, wanting our help with measuring their impact, we were all in. Impact can look many different ways. So although this question of let's measure our impact may, may sound easy at first, I guarantee you it is pretty complicated. So we have divided this project up into three simple steps that will take us from identifying the information to helping them tell their story in our community. Step one, finding the data, defining the scope. We want to define impact not only as profit, but also as people, as clients, as the support that they contribute to our economy. We are constructing surveys that will help them get data from their clients and that will enable us to take it to step two, analyzing the data with statistics. We use statistics as a tool to uncover patterns and to find meaning behind that information. And that leads us to step three, telling a story using that data. We are helping them tell a story of community empowerment, and hopefully we will be able to be a part of their plans moving forward, maybe expanding their services all over the United States. Who knows? Telling the story with data can have that power. I have committed to help small business owners tell their story because of a history of exclusion and racism, because they have been denied fair competition in our economy, because black and brown entrepreneurs have struggled for way too long. Telling a story with data is my way to transform information into insight and my passion into real, tangible impact. As somebody who works with data on a pretty regular basis, the one thing I appreciate about it most is its versatility. Now, we just talked about the community applications, but there are also organizational applications as well as individual applications. Community applications, for me, it is my activism outlet. It is my possibility to combine my passion for my academics with my activism and my desire for social change. On the organizational level, I can think of a single large company that doesn't use a data science division to make decisions nowadays. It has become so vastly popular that people often equate data science to magic. And then lastly, the individual applications of telling a story with data. Each and every one of us has a little thing up here called a brain. And all this brain does all day is take in the information that we have available around us and make decisions based upon that in a way that makes each and every one of us somewhat of a mini data scientist. Really, that's what data scientists do all day. So seeing that we are all somewhat of a data scientist, we need to know, you need to know 
how to tell a story using data. So today, I want to leave you with a simple three-step game plan on how you can tell a story using data. Step one, identify your data. Identify what you're passionate about, but also identify what fulfills you in the long run. This is a process of introspection that takes many people years, but it is important to find out what you care about deep down. Step two, find a pattern within those things you care about. May it be family or faith or your work, research, activism. All these things try to convey a message to you. They're coming from your principal center and try to convey a message about who you really are. Step three, let your past become your identity. Tell your story and let your future actions be guided by who you are deep down, by your principal center, by your virtues at the core of your existence. Data, for me, is the abstraction of information into numbers. And if you understand that simple concept, it can open doors for you in all areas of life. It will enable you to tell a story, to tell your story that can last for centuries and will not be forgotten. So let me ask you, how will you choose to tell it?